I'm Sean Wilson from Skype, and today I'm going to walk you through the top features that we use and how to use them efficiently on the new Skype for Business client. So today I want to walk you through the contact list or the main client within Skype for Business. The reason I want to walk you through is some great features and functionality in this that I think is important to call out. The first one is, you can see in the new Skype-inspired user interface, is that we're actually using the Skype presence indicators. In these, we can identify if a user is available, if they're inactive, or if they're in a conference call, as well if somebody chooses to be on Do Not Disturb. You also have a couple of other key features. One is what's happening today. So I might put in here, recording a train, the trainer session. And then anybody that happens to know me and see me, they'll actually see, just like you see here with Think, Do, and Scale, they'll see that I'm recording a Train the Trainer session. The other element to this that I really wanted to call out is that it, right from this, I have the ability to look at people based on the groups that they're in. So are they in my favorites? Are they in finance or legal? Also, the ability to check them based on status. This is one that I typically use when I need to find somebody that's online for my team. I'll go in here and look to see who's available. As well, you can also base it on relationships. Are they colleagues? Are they in your work group? Are they friends and family? But the big piece I really wanted to make sure that you understand in this is how to add somebody. So I'm going to show you what it's like to add Katie, who is on my team, but I didn't have her in my contacts list yet. So I type in Katie Jordan. It pulls it from the Skype for Business servers, and I have the ability to come in and add her to my contact list. Now, typically I'd say, oh, I'll add her to external or to finance or one of those, but really I talked to Katie so much, I wanted to make sure I add her to my favorites. I also can copy that same contact to a different location within Skype for Business. So in this case, she's part of the marketing team, and so I'd make sure to add her to our marketing contacts. And as you can see down here, there's Katie. One of the great things that you'll see with Skype for Business is that we have actually adopted the Skype user interface. And with the round pictures and the presence indicators to show what the status of a user is, is really helpful in increasing your productivity. One of the pieces that I wanted to show you is actually how easy it is to start an IM conversation. So double clicking on Katie Jordan, I have the ability to say, hi, can you IM? At this point, Katie says yes, no, comes back. Great. She says she can. Do you have the status report we talked about? Now, this is key for us because I had asked her about this file, but I don't have the access to the file. So I'm now finding out if she has it and if she can actually send it over. Now, this is a great ability for us to work in real time. Because at this point, we're not having to send an email, wait for the email, and then make sure that I'm getting it. So she's just going to send it right over. And as you can see, there's the project overview. I click download all, starts downloading the file for me without ever having to leave our desk or stop the tasks that we were doing. At this point, she sent over the file. I've got the file. That's great. But I have some additional questions about this file. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to take this straight from this and actually add some voice to the call. So as I'm calling Katie, at this point I can start to ask her some additional questions. Hi. Hi, Katie. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You know what? Let's make this a video call because, you know, there's just nothing like being able to see each other over video to really get the true personal intercommunications that exists within Skype for Business. All so, right. hey, thanks for sending over that status report. Uh, do you mind if I actually use that for uh, my presentation later this week? Not at all. Go ahead. Excellent. Thank you. I'll make sure to put in some props and kudos in there for you for your help for getting it over to me so quickly. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Thanks, Katie. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. One of the things I wanted to make sure that you can see is Skype for Business is super easy to create a meeting just with one click. So you click the new Skype meeting button at the top and up pops a Outlook meeting request that is already populated with your Skype meeting information right there. Now, at this point, all I need to do is add my team members. So I'm going to add Jun Min, I'm going to add Katie, and 
I'm going to give it a subject, and the subject in this is going to be status report review. And at that point, I'm going to make sure that I got the timing right, and it's for today, but I want to make sure that I'm later in the day. So I'm going to make it for 1 o'clock. It's a 30-minute meeting, and I'm just going to send it off. Now, at this point, this meeting is already on their calendar. But it is also set that when they go into their Skype for Business client, they're going to be able to go to the Meetings tab like I showed before. And as you can see, the Skype for Business meeting for status report review is now populated in there. So one of the things for me is I can just double click and join the meeting. However, I need to make sure that both Junmin and Katie know this meeting is there. So one of the things that I want to be able to do is I am with both of them really quick to make sure that they get into the conference call. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open a meeting with Junmin, and then I'm going to drag Katie into that IM window, and it actually makes it a conversation with the three of us. At this point, they're both getting IMs, and we're having a three-way conversation in Instant Message. Jun Min responded saying, not a problem. He's going to be in there. So let's just make sure that we all jump into that meeting right away. I'll come in. I'll double click. And at this point, there's two participants in the meeting. I'm going to show you. It's Jun Min. But I can always check my participant list by clicking on these three people up top. This shows me the ability to see who's in the call, what their status is. Are they muted? Are they adding voice? Is their video coming or are they screen sharing? This is important with meeting controls, and I'll get into this a little bit more later on. But the key piece for me right now is we happen to notice that Katie's not in the call. So I can come down here under Invite More People and actually type in Katie's name, add her to the meeting just by adding her name in and clicking OK. At this point, she'll receive a prompt to join the meeting, and in she is. I'm going to start up my video, and hopefully that'll encourage them to start their video as well. Hey, thanks, Katie. Thanks, Junmin. It's sure. great to see your faces. Your, your bright and smiley faces are making my day. Hey, I wanted to actually just take a couple minutes to go through the uh, PowerPoint uh, status report that you sent over, Katie. And Junmin, I wanted your, your input on it. So if you have a second, I'm going to share my screen. Do you have a minute? Sure. Awesome. One second. Let me just go. As you can see, I'm coming in. I choose Present My Desktop. Using my desktop to share, I now get this heads-up display, and I can choose whichever monitor I want to project, and I want to choose this one. And so it actually shows me also the yellow band around it that I'm going to choose. And I press Present. And at this point, my presentation starts to connect. And in just a second, you can see that it says currently presenting. Well, they don't want to see pictures of themselves, but we do want to look at our project overview that we were talking about. Hey, guys, I really wanted to just talk a little bit about this slide here. And I noticed that in the Americas, our Skype for Business Online is just taking off, and that's such great news. Just want to make sure that I've got the right information here and that we're looking good. And the only thing that we're yellow on is the equipment ordering. Is there anything else that I need to know before I go and share this with our leadership team? Not from my end, Jimin. Everything looks good here. Excellent. That's great. Uh, well, I really appreciate it. Thanks for just taking a minute. I know it was a quick meeting, and I just wanted to say thanks for making some time for me. It really helps. Now, as you can see, I have this call monitor up. This call monitor has always got mute control, but I can also end the call quickly and easily. One of the greatest things that Skype for Business brings to productivity is the integration with Office. And so what I wanted to share with you today is actually how tight that integration is. And one of the biggest things that's important in meetings is those meeting notes. And everybody wants them, and everybody wants to know where they are. Right from the Skype for Business client, you have the ability to create your notes for your meeting. Now, it's not only just creating the notes. It pulls in the time, the date for the meeting. It also brings in all the participants and how they joined the meeting. One of the other pieces I wanted to share with you is the ability to share those notes, because it doesn't matter if you just capture them. So one of the things you can actually do right from OneNote is email your notes. And it automatically populates all the attendees from that meeting and the notes and how they joined. So this is just one more way of that rich integration with Office that makes Skype for Business so easy to use. 
The other piece to share is really the integration with PowerPoint and how valuable that is. What I've actually already done is I've actually already uploaded a deck, but you could choose right from here, a PowerPoint presentation, you can choose to upload those PowerPoint files, which I've already done so that we can take a look at it. Now, the reason I wanted to share this is this gives me the ability, if I only want to be able to have it for me that I can download it or everyone can download it uh, for after the meeting for those important pieces. As well, I can also choose to present it now. So I'm actually going to present right now. And once I've got that, it's going to bring up the presentation. Now, I can see that one of my teammates here has highlighted in this presentation the growth in Americas. But really, I wanted to share that same annotation in probably a different color because I'm really excited actually about the growth over here in Europe for Skype for Business Online. You know, Skype has always been really popular in Europe and the fact that Skype for Business is growing is really impressive for us. So this gives me the ability to annotate and my teammates to do the same thing and see it in real time using the power of PowerPoint. It wouldn't be a truly powerful uh, PowerPoint presentation or meeting if we didn't have the ability to share it with the masses. So one of the things we've actually have the ability to do is start the recording of the meeting. Now, every single person will get a notification that recording has started. I can pause it if I wanted to, I can stop it, and then at the end I can manage my recordings right from here. One of the things that we really always have to figure out is how do you manage that person that while you're in a conference call is making all that background noise? And so we give you lots of control to manage your participants. As you noticed, I clicked on those three uh, participant list button up top, and now I have the ability to uh, mute. I can remove somebody from a meeting. I can actually make somebody an attendee, which reduces their, their rights. But the other piece to this is, if I really wanna make sure that they stay, I can also choose pin to gallery. But in this case, Jun Min just, you know, he, he was in the car or talking to somebody, making lots of noise. So I just mute him. As you can notice, his mute button is actually set in his window. And so at this point, we're not hearing any of his background noise. The other piece to this that's important is I want to make uh, Katie an attendee. And the reason that this is important is because there's some participant actions that are important. The first one is that we bring it to you in that same heads up display. The first one is if I wanted to mute the audience and mute everybody, that's great. Because at that point, nobody's able to interrupt me and I just want to be able to, to finish my sentence without being interrupted and have my ideas taken across. But the other one is sometimes you don't necessarily want attendees video to be presenting. You just want the primary people. And so we also have the ability to turn off video. So in this case, we made Katie a uh, attendee. We turn off her video. She doesn't have the ability to share video anymore with us. Now, the big one that's really probably one of the most important that we always see is you're, you're sitting in a meeting and you're like, I need to get more people invited to this meeting. I can actually invite right from here, click invite by email, it opens up my Outlook client, and I can send an email to a colleague that needs to join this meeting. One of the great features that we've actually enabled within Skype for Business is a great way to engage your uh, meeting community that you're actually presenting to. And that feature is actually the poll. And so if you come here under present and you choose more, one of the things you can do is you can have a whiteboard for collaborating or Q&A, but really if you wanna get that engagement from the field, you throw out a poll. Now in this case, our poll is all about pets, right? And we want people to tell us what is their favorite type of pet. And in my case, that I really want to ask is, is it a dog? Is it a cat? Or is it a pig? Because, you know, potbelly pigs are really cute. We now look for the team to be able to respond to this poll, and they'll tell us, oh, we got, we got one dog. And I think, oh, well, I have to choose pig because I really just think pigs are really cool. So we have a three-way tie, but this is a great way to also steer your conversations. If you're talking to uh, a group and you want to know which brand they like better or which direction they want to take the meeting. And so the poll is a great example of how to engage all levels of presenters and attendees.